for you. Excuse me. All right, what do we want to play today? Let's go d6. I'm trying out some new openings because why not? It's Blitz. You can get away with a lot of things. And this is the modern defense or the perk. And I always pronounce perk wrong, so I'm like hesitant to say it. I need to look this up again, how it's pronounced. Perks? No, no, no. I should just drop, just stop trying. That's it's not going to be good. All right, so what is happening here? Can I go c5? Maybe I'll go knight bd7 first and then go c5 next move. And we'll see where he will castle to. Probably not queenside. Probably kingside. I can't castle right now, unfortunately. But I'm not too sad about it. I can, for example, castle queenside later, maybe. He did castle. Okay. Now I go b4, attack his knight. And now could play queen a5. Yeah, kind of like hmm, queen a5. And maybe I can make some ideas happen with like knight a4, knight c3. Things of that nature. Now I also can bring the queen over to e5. That's actually quite uncomfortable. If he plays knight b3 of knight e5, uh, queen e5 and threatening queen takes b2, he can still play queen c1, but not a move he necessarily wants to play because his queen is quite nicely placed here, stopping him from castling. Farmer is asking if I saw the game by Pragnanda, one of the world's top talents these days. And, oh no, not Pra, yeah, Pragnanda and his opponent castled after moving the rook and they both didn't notice. Okay, that is crazy. That is really crazy. Okay, uh, f4 doesn't really concern me, I think. So I can finally castle. And now I still have one square left for the queen. Go to h5. That was the only one remaining. And now the e4 pawn got much weaker. He goes f5. Wants to play knight f4. But I think I'll just grab this pawn on e4. And then the pawn on f5 is also hanging. So probably needs to take on g6 first. Um, go knight f2. But now I can just take on g2. Take on d3. I'll take on d3, take on f5, and I'm happy about my two extra pawns, I would say. All right, rook f3, but my position is like super solid. Mm, where do I want to put my queen though? Maybe I'll keep it out here, active on h5, stopping any queen h6 business. So he doesn't get too close to my king. And I just have to watch out for tricks here because I'm up two pawns. So um, obviously a position is winning. I just need to make sure I can convert and there are no problems, like rook takes f6 could be a good idea. Yes, he does that. Um, and bring the knight to f6, and at least having some, some trickster maybe, yeah? Yeah. I should not have necessarily allowed that. Now you can even go knight d7 if he wants to. Uh, but I'd actually like to see this knight leaving the board. So now I have to defend it against knight d7. Okay. 
He's not threatening anything, so I bring the rook into action. I have an eye on the rook on f1. Now he's threatening something? Doesn't look like it. So I can go rook d4. Ah, queen e5 might be a threat. So maybe I'll just go f6. I'll go rook d4, and if queen e5, I can just go f6 then, and um, that's fine. Knight g5, is there any threat? I need to play some moves. Oh, that was my queen, that's bad. Whew. Now I really need to play some moves quickly. Yeah, you guys didn't see that. How I plan on my queen. Um, just pretend like it never happened, right? Okay, that's you four. Should have maybe looked for what he is threatening. And then if I move to queen, let's say to h5, threatening rook d1, this should be winning. But this is a good example of where I didn't pay enough attention to what he wants to do. Because with his move rook f1, he was hinting at this rook takes f6. And if I spot it, then I can just go king g7, for example, just defend against. So prophylaxis as is pretty much important at every stage in the game.